today we look at the situation of some sophomore guards around the Big Ten Conference. If you haven't yet, please share and subscribe to help grow the channel and I hope you enjoy the video. Today's video is powered by SeatGeek. Get $20 off any tickets sold using promo code AntWright on the SeatGeek app or website. The sophomore leap, I believe in it, and not just for guys like Jaden Ivey, who made a huge splash this summer during the FIBA U19 games. There are other second year guys who now know what to expect from the team and the coaching staff. They've experienced battling for placement in the conference, and they're coming into the new season wanting a bigger role on the team. Former top prospects see this year as their coming out party. Look at Jonathan Davis for Wisconsin. He put up about seven points per game this past year and was the sixth man on a team full of upperclassmen who just won the Big Ten Championship in 2020. With some off-season attrition and based on who's coming in, he's in a position to start and play 30 plus minutes in the upcoming year. Keegan Murray for Iowa put up seven points and five rebounds per game, earning his way onto the Big Ten All-Freshman team. He played behind CJ Frederick and Joe Wieskamp on the wing. And after the season, Frederick transferred to Kentucky and Wieskamp ended up going to the NBA. No recruits or incoming transfers should impact Murray's minutes or stand in his way of being one of the top players for Iowa this year. Andre Corbello had a solid nine points, four rebounds and four assists for Illinois playing behind Adam Miller, Ayo Dusumu, and Trent Frazier at the guard spots. He still earned all Big Ten freshman honors, playing over 21 minutes per game. Even though he was a sixth man last year, many peg him as a top three guard in the league heading into this upcoming season and after the exodus of Adam Miller to LSU and Ayo Dusumu to the NBA. Alfonso Plummer is a guard transferring in, but not seen as a threat to take the ball out of Corbello's hands. Ethan Morton is a former four-star recruit, ranked the 103rd best player in the country. In his first season, he didn't play that much and managed two total field goals against Big Ten opponents. On one of the younger teams in the country, he played behind Jaden Ivey, Saja Stefanovic, Eric Hunter, Brendan Newman, Isaiah Thompson, and all of those guys returned this year, so he'll need a pretty good summer to get in the rotation. Christian Lander is in a predicament at Indiana. The former top point guard reclassed, then attended college a year early, playing sparingly in his first season, gets a coaching change. Now Indiana has tough transfers coming in like Xavier Johnson and Parker Stewart at the guard spots, as well as Tamar Bates, one of the top guards in the 2021 class. Lander certainly has his work cut out for him. A.J. Hogard came into Michigan State as the number 81 player in the country. He had some good highlights throughout the year out of 26 games, started eight of them. He shared point guard duties with Rocket Watts and Foster Lawyer, but Rocket has since transferred to the SEC and Foster has transferred to Davidson. He's the next man up, but Izzo needed some insurance at the point guard spot and he needed to add some depth with some high level players. Michigan State went out to get a top 10, quick, fast, athletic point guard with some size in Jaden Akins from the 2021 recruiting class. But Tom Izzo wasn't done. He went out and got a first team all colonial performer, a colonial defensive player of the year in Tyson Walker. One of the best mid-major point guards available who was a top 50 scorer in the country. Akins will have four years of eligibility and Walker has three more years of eligibility with two years of experience. Then in 2022, one of the top point guards in the country and the number one player out of Minnesota committed to Michigan State and Trey Holloman. Hogard could try to find time off the ball, but he has to compete with the top shooting guard in the country in Max Christie, while Akins can also play off the ball. It's going to be a bit crowded, but it's a situation he can overcome as long as he's been putting in work since late March to establish himself in the rotation. Zeb Jackson came into Michigan as a top 100 player and the number 11 shooting guard in the country. He played 16 games last year and only had three made field goals in conference play. He did play behind a veteran group and transfer Mike Smith out of Columbia, Eli Brooks. Then you had Shondi Brown, who was a sixth man, but could have started at probably 95% of schools in the Division I level. It was hard to find minutes for him, but now in his sophomore year, he wants a bigger role, but he'll have another tough situation. Eli Brooks said he's coming back, and Jawan went out and shirred up the point guard spot and got Devontae Jones, who was a Sunbelt Player of the Year, 
top 40 scorer, top three in steals nationally. You'd expect Brooks and Jones to start, but Juwan is also bringing in the number one recruiting class in the country, including a McDonald's All-American shooting guard in Kobe Bufkin and the number seven point guard in the class, Frankie Collins. Both guys are looking to compete for a spot in that rotation. Zeb should still have the advantage over the freshman if he does and holds it for the entire year. With Brooks gone and possibly Jones too, this should set him up in year number three to get to 30 minutes per game based on the roster setup. But if Jawan feels there's any weaknesses in the backcourt heading into the following season, he'll just patch it up just like he has in his previous two off seasons. Overall, this is a big year for some sophomore guards and honestly could be their last year to prove they belong. For some, you can see they're the next guy up. For others, forget about starting. They'll be fighting and clawing every day in practice and workouts just to earn their spot in the rotation. Dan Dockage can't guard me.